Hello everyone, here is our illusion. Welcome back to WebGPU Fundamental Tutorial. Last week, we learned the basic of lighting, including three basic lighting elements, ambient light, diffuse light, and specular light. Besides, we introduced the phone model, and also the parallel light, point light, and spotlight. And today, we're going to learn how to implement the parallel light and point light which is a simplified version of the Lambert lighting model. Welcome to download our code in the re GitHub repo. All right, let's look into the final effect of our demo first. We are going to use the form of instance introduced in the fifth video. We added hundreds of objects into the scene, including boxes and spheres. If you're not familiar with the multiple object rendering, please review the fifth video. And today, we are going to focus on the lighting operations. In this demo, we simplify the phone model and simulate a basic point light and parallel light diffuse effect. Now, let's turn off the point light and parallel light first and look at effect of ambient light, which is actually a brightness coefficient. There is no specific location or orientation. We just need to multiply the color of the light and the color of the object. Here, the ambient line is white, which is RGB 111. So the final result will be the color of the object itself. As we can see, ambient light can effectively illuminate all of the objects, but it's hard to detect the 3D structure due to there's no light and shade effects. So we usually use this as a basic brightness. And now let's look into the point light. We can see in the scene, there is a point light moving around. It has a specific position and the direction of the light. Besides, the light will decay with distance. So when we adjust the radiation, then let's check the effect. Only the surface facing to the point light will be illuminated. And according to the angle between the light direction and the fragment, the shades will be different, so we can easily detect the 3D structure. Now let's look into the parallel light. Parallel light has no specific location and no radiation radius, but it has a very specific direction. The brightness of a fragment will be decided by the angle between the light and the fragment, but nothing to do with the relative position. We can also illuminate all the objects in the scene. And let's see how to implement this. As we introduced last week, the very important parameter we need to introduce is the normal vector of the fragment. We can pass the vector into the vertex shader via the vertex buffer. It should really be added when we create the models. For example, this vertex coordinates of a box. It contains the vertex coordinates and also the UV coordinates. Besides, we added the normal vector, which is going to be used to calculate the effect of the lighting. This structure is a comprehensive vertex data. In addition to adding the normal vectors, we also need to introduce another index. So what is this for? If you remember the pipeline configuration, we always use triangle list to do the graphic assembly. That means in the vertex data, every three points will form a triangle surface. For example, that is a 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9 in this sequence. And another setup is triangle strap. That means in each triangle phase, we are going to replicate the coordinates of the first two vertices, which is in sequence 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, and 3, 4, 5. This method is more efficient and use less vertex data, but it is difficult for modeling due to the order of the vertex data. So usually, we rarely use this model. And to optimize this problem, WebGPU supports a manual setting of the vertex index coordinates, that is, index buffer. It allows developers to manually set which three points could be combined a triangle surface, instead of using the vertex order. 
Example, this index 0 to 1 will combine a triangle face, and so on. Every face will replicate the first two points, then it will greatly reduce the amount of data in the vertex and increase the rendering efficiency of GPU. But unlike the triangle stretch mode, we can freely arrange the order of these vertices. So while maintaining the performance, it's more friendly for modeling. We also recommend this index mode. And most modeling software will also optimize the model into this index mode. We are not going to introduce in detail about how to generate the normal factors and the index. There are some modeling algorithms for the cubes, spheres, and planes and cones. And for some irregular model, it's going to be difficult. We normally need to set it manually. And if you are interested, please research after class. We just need to learn how to use the existing model data. Okay, now we have the full model data. We need to do the configuration of the pipeline. Just need to add normal configuration in the attributes. And the offset of the UV need to be modified as well. Besides the vertex buffer configuration, we also use the index. So we also need to create a corresponding index buffer. And because the index only contains the numerical value, and they are all positive integer types. So it could be unit 60 array or unit 32 array. We need to set the vertex buffer and set index buffer. These two must go hand in hand. When we set index content, it must match the content of the index buffer. Additionally, a different from the normal draw function, WebGPU has a index mode named the draw indexed function. Because the vertices will be replicated, so the number of vertices here is not the number of the points, but the number of vertices in the index. And we're not going to talk too much about the other configurations. And the other parts in the TS code is also the normal operations, such as create a matrix buffer of the object and also the configuration for the lightings. And we can update the position and intensity of the lights dynamically in JavaScript. Here, we're going to mainly introduce how to calculate the lighting in a shader. Now let's look into the vertex shader first. In the previous example, we set the MVP matrix in the JavaScript. And in the vertex shader, we just uh, directly multiply the by the position. But in actual use, we're not going to know the origin of the matrix data neither the configuration of the camera. So if only one MVP matrix is bonding, it's gonna be difficult for us to implement. So the more common method is pass the model view, camera view, and the projection matrix into the vertex shader. So we can multiply directly in the shader to get the MVP matrix. For example, here we multiply the projection matrix with the model matrix of the object to get MVP matrix and then perform the subsequent coordinate transformation. In this demo, we're only considering the diffuse reflection, so we don't need to know where the camera is. But if we need to calculate the particular light, then we, can, we should take the camera move into the consideration. So in Vertex Trader, we need to compute the projection matrix first and then calculate MVP matrix. Second point, the position of the output. We use the MVP matrix multiply the original vertex coordinates because we want to put the coordinates of the local model into the projection space. That means it converted into the clipping coordinates. But when we calculate the position of the light and shadow, the data is actually in the world coordinate. So we need to separate MVP matrix and import it into the shader. We just need to multiply the model view by the vertex coordinates. And the output here is actually a 1 by 4 homogeneous coordinates. But we just need the first three values of x, y, z. After the interpolation, each fragment will get a corresponding real coordinates in the world space. 
which is convenient to calculate light effects. And the third point is the normal vector. We can't multiply the normal coordinates by the modal matrix directly because this normal data is actually a normalized vector. If we translate the normal coordinates, it will affect the calculation of the light intensity. So normally you only consider it the rotate and the zoom effects. The simplest way is to use a homogeneous coordinate with W component, which is zero, and then multiply by the modal matrix. This method will remove the effect of translation, but only applying the scaling and the rotating transformation. And another problem here, what if XYZ is scaled in different ways? For example, this picture. If XY scale is different, then normally the normal direction will be distorted. The normal vector is not perpendicular to the plane anymore. So here we are going to use a normal matrix to do the transformation to remove the impact of the inequality scaling. But the calculation of this normal matrix is a bit complicated. We need to compute the tra transpose matrix of the inverse matrix of the model view. So generally, we calculate this model in JavaScript and then put the corresponding normal matrix into the shader. But we're not going to introduce too much detail here. In our demo, we don't have the inequality scaling problem. OK, these are the three key points in the vertex shader. The takeaway is we split MVP matrix and then pass into the vertex shader separately. And we use the model view to calculate the vertex and the normal data. And now let's look into the fragment shader. And we are going to use the forward rendering process to simulate the uh, diffuse light. It is just a simplified Lambert model. For each element, the output color is the color of the object itself, multiplied by the color of the light. As for the color of the object, it is a parameter passed from the vertex shader, or it could be the color of the texture. For the color of the light, it could be multiple light sources in the scene. So we can calculate the color of each light source in the scene in turn, and add the lighting effect together for each fragment. Finally, we multiply by the color of the object and then output. In this demo, we have one ambient light, one parallel light, and one point light. In the real scene, the number or the type of the lights are uncertain, so we can add a for loop here to go through all the lights in the scene and then accumulate the results of each light source. Let's first look into the ambient light. As we introduced in the phone model, it's just a basic brightness and nothing to do with the direction and the position. So we just need to use the color of the ambient light and multiply by an intensity coefficient. Here we're going to use the white light. Now let's look into the parallel light. Firstly, we need to know the direction of the parallel light. And here we can use the group to bind the parallel light position. Generally, we consider the direction of the parallel light is always towards the arranging. So we can adjust the direction by the position of the parallel light. So how to calculate the result of the diffuse reflection of a parallel or a fragment? Actually, the normal vector has been processed in the vertex shader. So we can use this directly. But we need to normalize the direction vector of the parallel light. WGSL provides a very convenient API, which is normalize. And we can use the dot API to calculate the dot product between two vectors. But we need to pay attention here. The result will be result in minus 1 and 1. But we're not going to consider the light less than 0. So we need to make sure the coefficient of diffuse is in the range of 0 to 1. So the result of the parallel light will be the color of the light times intensity of the light and then multiply this diffuse factor. Now let's look into the point light. The effect will depending on the relative position of the point light and the fragment. That is known as frag position. 
the position of the light is the parameter that we pass in externally, and we can update it dynamically in JavaScript. Fragment position is also being processed in Vertex Shader. So the diffuse coordinates is similar. We use the unit vector of the incident array and then do the dot product with the frag normal and then discard the values less than zero. Another thing we need to consider the attenuation. We must set a radius. The intensity of the point light source will decay to zero if it is beyond the radius. Um, and we can use the lens API to calculate the distance between the point sets and the fragment. And if the lens is less than the maximum radius of the light source, then we can calculate the color. Otherwise, we can just ignore the point light. This will save the computation of GPU. And here we are going to use the second power of the distance to do the decay. So the end of the point light source will be the color of the point light multiplied by the intensity of the light source and then multiply a factor of diffuse and then multiply a factor of distance. Okay, that is a basic Lambert forward rendering process. And please download the code and practice. And please review how to do the coordinates transformation of frag position and frag normal. Here we just uh, implement the diffuse effect. Please try the mirror light effect on your own. And that's all for today. Next video, we're going to introduce the basic shadow effects and learn more about the depth map. That's all for today. Welcome to subscribe our channel. I'll see you next time.